Hey. Hey, what's going on? Brush your teeth. Good. Yeah, let me see. Smile. Good. Good job. All right. You about ready for bed? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's time for Betty bye. Yeah. What's Mr. Mitten say? Oh yeah, Mr. Mittens thinks it's definitely time for bed. Isn't that right, Mr. Mittens? Absolutely. We should definitely... Oh, we should definitely be asleep. I'm tired. By the way, Mr. Mittens, did Mom... Did Mom sew ears on? Mom did sew ears on, so now I can... I can hear a lot better. Oh, that's very cool, Mr. Mittens. Yeah. All right, Mr. Mittens, why don't you just hang out right here? Why don't we tuck? Why don't we tuck you in? Uh, well, what was the best part of your day? to the museum too. Yeah, when I was when I was a kid, there's a really cool museum. Um, not far from our house, uh, there were a couple actually. Um, one was the Air Force Museum, which is you know this crazy amazing. Uh, collection of planes from the Wright brothers up to, you know, modern. And uh, my grandpa, so your great grandpa, who unfortunately, yeah, you never got to meet him. Um, but your great grandpa uh, had fought in World War II. And uh, he loved going to the Air Force Museum. Uh, which is in Dayton, Ohio. And he used to love going there and bringing uh, his grandsons. So whenever my grandma and grandpa would uh, come up to visit us, yeah, we would always go to the Air Force Museum. And the other really cool museum we would go to was uh, the Natural History Museum. Yeah, I love natural history. You too? Yeah. What's your favorite part of it? The observatory. Mine too. I love going to the observatory. Yeah. Sitting back and looking up at the ceiling and seeing all the stars. Yeah. I know I love the night sky. Yeah, your grandpa's a really big amateur astronomer. Do you know that? Yeah. Yeah, you've looked through his telescopes. Cool, huh? I know. Yeah, he loves, he loves his telescope. In fact, when I was a kid, um, when I was like in my teens, uh, your grandpa set up, uh, he had, uh, it was a 20 inch telescope. Now what that means is the mirror was 20 inches across. Okay, so the mirror was like this big, okay? And the actual telescope, though, uh, if it was standing vertically, was about eight feet tall. Yeah, you needed a ladder to climb up. If you were looking at an object in the sky that was right above you, you had to get on a ladder to look through it and, and see, but it was so cool. Yeah, yeah, I remember one time he, he was out real late, and I had gotten up, and it was like 5 o'clock in the morning, and my dad had been out all night uh, looking at the stars, and on this night, Orion was out, and Orion is my favorite constellation. You know Orion with, he has his belt, the three stars that make Orion's belt, 
and his sword. Yeah. Well, on the third star on his belt, if you have a really powerful telescope, you can see uh, the Orion Nebula, and you can see green and red, and it looks like like things you see out of a out of a on the internet, like a photograph from NASA. Yeah, super cool. I love that you love that. Yeah. All right. Well, you want me to read you a story? Okay. Okay. Well, I think where were we? I think we're in chapter chapter two of Jacques and the Magic Beanstalk. Chapter 2, The 2,579th Wonder of the World. When Jacques told his mother what he had done, remember he had given the beans for a cow, you already know what happened. Gertrude Grundy might have been madder than she had ever been, which, for her, is saying a lot. She screamed. She berated Jacques. She chased him around the house, snapping at him with her leather belt. Oof, she was pretty mean. Juliet and Jules were both crying, but she ignored them and carried on until she was exhausted. The only thing that saved Jacques from the worst beating of his life was that he was very nimble and quick on his feet. Only rarely did he feel the belt sting. When Jacques's mother was too tired to beat him, she hurled the small handful of beans out the window. What are you going to do? she wailed. She looked up at the ceiling. Could I possibly have a more stupid son? I can't imagine. What did I ever do to deserve this? Mm. Jacques finally crept off to the barn where he slept with the mice in the hay. He dreamed of giants and starving children. At one point, he awakened to the patter of rain on the roof and the drip, drip, drip of several leaks. The next morning when he awakened, Jacques still felt as if he had failed terribly. The only thing he didn't regret was he had that he had hopefully saved Bessie from the butcher. And he might not have even done that. For all he knew, that old woman might even be worse than the butcher. But what was done was done. What do you think? Do you think she was a mean lady or a nice lady? The gypsy. I think she was nice too. Yeah, I bet she and Bessie are doing good. Yeah, that's my think. That's what I think. He got up and yawned and stretched. He talked to the mice. He was hungry, but didn't want to face his mother. So he decided to hike out to the old orchard to see if he could find an apple. He stepped out of the barn and stopped in his tracks, almost fearful to raise his gaze. You have probably experienced something similar, you think you see something out of the corner of your eye. Something frightening or too wonderful to imagine, and you are almost afraid to look at it, to prove to yourself that it's real or that it isn't. Jacques did look up, of course, and when he did, what he saw stunned him into shock, to disbelief. He stood there, eyes wide, mouth agape. Between the house and the barn where his mother had tossed the beans, what do you think it was? That's right. There stood a beanstalk to end all beanstalks. Indeed, it was not a beanstalk. It was many beanstalks all spiraled together. Each of those seeds had grown its own stalk, and together they intertwined to form an enormous trunk thicker than the 
thickest tree he had ever seen. Jacques stood in awe, tracing it up and up and up. It rose to an absolutely impossible height until it looked to be the size of a slender thread where it at last disappeared into a puffy gray cloud. You've probably heard of the seven wonders of the world, things like the Great Wall of China or the Pyramids of Giza. You know about those, right? Yeah. But the truth is, the world is full of wonders. The official list doesn't begin to cover it, and even on that limited list, there are so many wonders that Jacques' magic beanstalk came in at number 2,579. What would you do if you had awakened one fine morning to find a beanstalk stretching to the sky, growing in your own backyard? What would you do? Would you climb it? You would tell Mommy and Daddy about it. That's a good idea. You should definitely let us know first. Um... And then we would uh, come up with a plan. But, yeah, that would be pretty wild. I'm not going to lie. That would be pretty crazy. Uh, <laughs> so, it goes on. Would you do what Jacques did? Because what Jacques did was courageous and a little crazy. So what do you think Jacques did? Right. Let's see how long chapter three is. Mm. Do I have time to read another chapter? Let me see what time it is. Hang on one second. Okay. Okay, we have time for one more chapter. All right, and then you have to go to bed. That last chapter was pretty short. Yeah, that was like a two-page chapter. Okay, are you ready? Chapter three, First Ascent. The beanstalk's stout branches started at the ground and spiraled up the stalk. Each green branch ended in a large leaf. They resembled banana tree leaves. You know what? Banana tree leaves have those really big... I mean, banana tree leaves are, like, huge. Well, that's how big these beanstalk leaves were. Jacques approached the beanstalk carefully. He walked all the way around it. He felt the waxy leaves. He tested a couple of the branches. Easy enough, he said to himself. But the sheer height of it looked scary. He had no interest in seeing his mother, and he didn't feel terribly hungry. Jacques was used to missing meals. So, although he had no climbing equipment, he pretended to be a famous mountaineer. And Jacques began to climb. Very dangerous. He climbed quickly and easily, until the house was a hundred feet below him. Then he climbed and rested and climbed some more. After a time, he had climbed so high he could see far across the sprawling countryside, the gravel roads and small farms and neat fields. The house, far below, looked like a tiny dollhouse. Can you imagine? Are you afraid of heights? No, no. You're pretty brave, aren't you? Yeah. Anyone in Jacques' position who was afraid of heights would have been terrified. But heights didn't bother Jacques. Ugh. He was, after all, a famous mountaineer. At least in his pretend view of things. He started up again and noticed he was getting a little tired. His legs quivered at times, 
and he stepped up on the branches as he stepped up on the branches. His forearms ached, and his fingers were getting a little raw and sore. Next time you do this, he told himself, remember to bring some work gloves, if there is a next time. He had to rest to catch his breath. When he looked down, he felt a little shaky. He felt a little chilly as well. It was much cooler up here, and while there had been no wind on the ground, the wind up here was blowing hard and steady. Yeah, I bet it was cold. Do you think, do you think Jacques was cold? Yeah, probably. Are you cold? You good? You good? Okay, good. As he climbed higher, the branches grew thinner and more widely spaced. Jacques may have pretended to be a famous mountaineer, but no prudent mountaineer would have done what he was doing. Do you know what prudent means? It means uh, a prudent mountaineer would be a mountaineer who is more careful. Was Jacques being careful? No, he was being pretty, pretty bold. Yeah, pretty bold, pretty dangerous. He was not being prudent. Still, he climbed and rested and climbed some more. Up and up, higher and higher he went. By the time he approached the base of the cloud, the stalk was no thicker than his waist, the green branches thin as his wrists. He worried they might break off in his hand, but when he tested them, they seemed strong enough. At last, he arrived at the base of the cloud, and still the incredible beanstalk continued. Above him, the cloud swirled around the stalk like a slow-motion tornado. Can you picture that? The clouds slowly spinning, but it's massive and just slowly spiraling. Yeah. And yet, in spite of the screaming wind coming from one side, the swirling cloud remained stationary at the top of the stalk. Very strange, even more strange, when he ascended the stalk up into the cloud, the wind instantly died. The cloud swirled around him to the point it nearly made him dizzy, but in the center of that funneling cloud where the beanstalk rose up through it, all felt calm and serene, like being in the eye of a hurricane. So if you ever notice a hurricane on TV, on the news, you know how it looks like a big giant spinning pinwheel, right? That hurricane. Well, what's crazy about a hurricane is in the middle of it, that little, that circle in the dead middle is called the eye of the hurricane. And a crazy phenomenon happens there. The winds in the hurricane can be spinning at literally hundreds of, well, well, almost 200 miles an hour, but hundreds plus mile per hour winds ripping around, spinning and spinning. But in the middle, it's a dead calm. I know. Nature is metal. I know. Jacques climbed another 10 minutes through the swirling, damp fog. It chilled him to the bone and made everything wet and slippery. Yeah, it's like walking outside on a foggy morning. You know, it's how everything's like damp, and you can see, you know how on a, on a foggy, misty morning, all the spider webs are like glistening, and you can see them all? I know, I love that too. And all the while, only a few feet away, the dense cloud swirled around him in strange, and constantly shifting patterns. After a time, he wondered if the cloud went on forever, but it did not, nor did he emerge from the top of it. 
the cloud ended as if trapped against the roof of a cave. At this point, the light had faded so much he could have used a flashlight, though in Jock's day, flashlights had yet to be invented. The stalk continued up through a vertical shaft of rock. Wait, what? There was a vertical shaft of rock at the top? What? It had now grown thin as his leg, the branches no thicker than two or three of his fingers. But they seemed to hold his weight. It was even darker at this point, but as he continued to climb, it slowly began to grow lighter. The rock seemed to be only about 30 feet thick. Then the sides turned to gravel and packed earth. And finally, he came up and out of this strange vertical tunnel like someone climbing out of a well. A strange well, to be sure, with the beanstalk centered therein. And when he emerged into the world above, what he saw astonished him even more than the beanstalk itself. Ah, what do you think Jacques saw? Ooh, a land of giants, maybe. So what else? in a land of giants, what do you think he might see up there? Mm, maybe there's a giant castle. Oh, mm, giant, giant turrets. Yeah, maybe even giant animals. I know. Well, chapter four is coming, but for now, you need to go to bed. All right? Sweet dreams. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. I know. And I will see you in the morning. You're gonna you're gonna bring me coffee in the morning, right? Great. Perfect. Thank you. I appreciate that.